Greetings in the name of the Most High. And here we are again uh, after a, a nuclear scare that didn't appear to really scare anyone. Um, but the escalation should be, uh, this is how most Christians violate the word of God in that they're all out there saying peace and safety. We've got Trump now, peace and, and they don't even, they didn't even pay attention to the, uh, to Biden trying to start or be, you know, whoever, you know, the, the, the administration uh, trying to start um, World War III to either A, deny Trump the presidency, B, to cause chaos, C, uh, Obama's revenge for getting trounced um, and all that. So it's uh, any number of reasons, but the, the, the response of the public, save for some of the great whistleblowers and some of the really, you know, intelligent minds out there, we're all in sync. We were all in sync yesterday, um, really trying to you know, get a handle on um, what that means and what, what a first launch means. Now, a first launch, it didn't mean a first launch of nuclear weapons. It means a first launch uh, of, of tactical weapons that can be tipped, you know, that can be nuclearized, if you will. And um, if that happens, you can kiss your entire economy, your way of life, your uh you can kiss basically kiss your lives away because your lives will be gone over. There won't be any need. And by the way, don't bother prepping. You won't need to prep if that's the case. Okay. Guaranteed. So I really see, I, I guess I could see how many levels of mind control, especially the church. And I want to address this to the church. You know, what is wrong with you people? You call yourselves Christians. You say you follow Jesus. You're following God's word. You are not following, not you, not Denzel Washington, not any of you in Hollywood that, who think you're, now you're stepping out in the limelight because you think it's safe. Uh, no. You know, the, the whole walk in Christ, in God's word, is prophetic. Okay. And what does Psalm 2 say? And I'll just prove it to you, uh, uh, you know, times 100. Psalm 2 says, when they say peace and safety, or not Psalm 2, it's, uh, which one is that? Um, oh, God, it was the one Trish sang, Be Warned. Was that Psalm 2? I guess so. Okay, so when they say peace and safety, sudden destruction comes. The Lord laughs at them, laughs at their, you know, at, at their at their mocking. When um, there is a uh, threat, as there was, just like when you wanted um, a change politically and people have been groaning for it for years, there was a wall of prayer. Now that's, and that's to be commended. You know, that's, that's the idea. But when there was a first launch warning where Putin has now warned that he's going nuclear next move, there was, you know, I would say nothing or less than nothing. And it's really, it's really too bad. And if you're one of those people, you know, it just means you're, um, you're not tuned in to what, what is happening. You know, not, not that you should be afraid and go hide, but that you should, you know, if you could have the same response that you had to get, uh, you know, a political change in America done, a, a real a, kind of a global change, then you should be the same mindset when there's a threat. You should be locked in prayer, you know, fast, pray, whatever it takes, you know, whatever, however you interpret um, the end of the world to be. <clears throat> and, you know, just think of all the children suffering and people, you know, I could just see the nukes hitting and people, and I used to think, you know, I mean, I'll tell you, I, I, I really went through a period of hatred toward people that, you know, hated me. And I just wanted to be there on the ground with the nukes, you know, landing so I could see their faces when they realized their, the plug was pulled on every and all their shit, you know. But then, of course, that's a very childish thing to think, and that was a long time ago. But, you know, the thing is, is that um, so now it wouldn't be it wouldn't be, you know, the enemy of God, you know, who are basically enemies of the lambs which is going to get to my topic today, which is it's, it's going to be reviving the, the topic of uh, 
of uh, not just stalking and, 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 and surveillance, but also the destruction of souls uh, via stalking, the destruction, and I mean electronic stalking, the destruction of people. And I've seen quite a few dis- destroyed and I, you know, I, I need to warn about this, but we got, I'm going to work up to it because had there been, you know, another response from say Putin did tactical nukes on Kiev, uh, you would then start getting the threat of the submarines off the two coasts in America, and they can vaporize both coasts within about three minutes and everyone in it. And nobody can catch the hypersonic missiles of Russia. Nobody can shoot those down out of the sky. And I know what you're thinking. Maybe, you know, it's so overwhelming, the thought of it. I just had to go on with my day. And, you know, that's fine. Go on with your day, you know. But just don't cross this threshold of, you know, of, of peace and safety. I mean, you know, the fact that we can't even have a discussion about it, like that Facebook is so dead and the people are so dead on it that they're all kind of pushing their little thing and they're, they're pushing their, you know, their protein drinks and they're pushing their whatever, their, their blankets and they're, and they're, they're where it's just like a bazaar now. It's, it's like a sales bazaar. It, it's not really a place for friends, but there's no discussion you know, I put it out there. I, I published a Reuters article or reprinted it. And, you know, right down the middle, just saying the facts. The fact is we've moved the needle to about 30 seconds to midnight. It's the closest it's ever been to to global thermonuclear war, which would be the end of your life. And I would at least say, please um, get your affairs in order, even you know, now, even today. You know, because the threat's not over yet. We don't understand exactly what's going on behind the scenes. And, and you know, we hope for the best. We hope that uh, Trump has a, a path to uh, to be seated as president, even though the uh, the Marxists on the other side would like to destroy everything. And they, they are the totalitarians and the fascists and the Nazis. And yeah, so funny when we fund Ukraine, we're we're we're. Um, we're, we're funding the Azov Battalion, which are literal Nazis. And nobody, you know, and, and the left gets to squawk their little baby, you know, diarrhea mouths about it, you know, calling Trump a Nazi. When the Azov Battalion, when Zelensky himself is a Nazi. It, it, it's, it's amazing, but uh, my intention in all this is I want the wars to end. I don't, you know, but there's so much money involved. They make, you know, if there's a nuclear war, they're not going to be hurt. They're going down the bunker. They're going to make a ton of money. They're going to come back up and restart the economy again. And, and, but you'll all be dead. It'll be a, you know, what they hoped for with COVID only successful. You should all be discussing this with your pastors in your prayer groups, in your, um, um, with your neighbors, you know, however you can, you know, you know, spread the word that, you know, it may be great times and the, the people, you know what I hear all day long? I mean, the last couple of days, I've heard every, I've heard everyone talking about this golden, we're going into a uh, golden era. And uh, it, it reminds me of Psalm 2. It's like when they say peace and safety, sudden destruction comes. It couldn't be more clear that that psalm applies to what's going on today. And the false prophets in the church, I mean, it's it's unbelievable. They're all talking. There's one guy, a famous preacher guy. He published a book about the coming golden age. He says, a thousand years of peace is upon us. And, um, you know, basically break out the pom-poms and the confetti because, you know, and the champagne because uh, you're in, you know, you you made it. Through the tough tribulation, now there's going to be peace. Um, so I'm, I'm going to not lend my voice to those. I'm not going to agree with those people. I'm going to say that if you really believe in God and if you're really led by the Holy Spirit, then, then show it, prove it. Because so far, most of you people are getting an F in, in, in manifesting the spirit and, and even, you know, praying for other people. I mean, what, what, what are people going to do? I, I heard about people in North Carolina. You know, that the guy doesn't have a CPAP machine, and all he needed was FEMA to bring him a CPAP machine. 
and he can't breathe. And, you know, other people with uh, cancer uh, medicine, and they can't get it because FEMA won't give it to them. And even now that Trump's elected, they're still not giving it to him. Okay, where's the... Sorry, no outrage. We're too busy selling blankets and devices that will take care of your ills and supplements, and we just don't have time to deliver that CPAP machine or the or the or the medication or whatever these people need. We just or, or the the you know the, the food for the baby or anything else. We just don't have time. You voted for Trump. We're going to pay the price. Trump. <laughs> Supporters are also deemed to be domestic terrorists. Well, that's a lie. But then again, when I quit talking to um, Marxists, I, I quit, you know, right about the time in 2020 when they were burning the cities down and, and pulling down the statues, that was the end of the discussion with me because they have proven to be, um, you know, the enemy. I mean, I, I, I pray for them. Uh, I feel sorry for them. Uh, I don't believe that uh, that any fruitful discussion can can be had. I don't believe there will be a healing of the divide ever. I believe that if we go down, we're going down divided and full of hate for each other. And that's the way I believe the world will end. It will end because of overwhelming hate. And I believe the hate we have toward each other actually brings the destruction. It's like a prayer. The hate is like a prayer. So I've been checking myself. It's like, do you really care what, you know, um, people say? And I, it was like, I, I felt like there's been a muzzle on us since, you know, for, for the last decade. And, you know, I used to have friends of all different. In fact, I'm working with people now that are on all different sides of the aisle. I mean, God bless them. There are people that voted for Harris and, and uh, Waltz that are... Uh, they just old fashioned Democrats. They just they think the world's still the same as it was 20 years ago. They don't realize the um, the real reality underneath. And I'm going to get into that in a minute. They don't understand what's really going on. And they just think it's like, well, we vote for the one we want. And, you know, those fascist Republicans have to go die and then we're going to take over. And, you know, I have news for you. The way it is right now, the fervency, there will be no taking over or cheating or any of that, it will be war. But it will be more likely cleaning up after a nuclear war. And I don't want to see that. I don't want to see people suffer in that way. And they've been suffering already without, with not being able to pay mortgages, not being able to survive this financial um, scourge. And, you know, you want people to do well, but if there are millions of people in the world who hate, you know, if one half of the world hates the other half, then I will tell you a house divided cannot stand. Then bring the, then the nukes will fly. And I'll give you a prophetic word. I know that, you know, a lot of people don't take, uh, when I have a prophetic word, they don't, they don't take it seriously. And that's, um, that's really bad on you. You know, that's too bad that you can't discern that. Because that's basic one-on-one, you know. You can't tell when it's, you know, because... Anyone can be prophetic. The Holy Spirit can speak through anyone, but it's up to you to discern what, when it's prophetic and when it isn't. When it is, that means you're getting a message via the Holy Spirit that you need to heed, even if it's from the lampshade or from Zeph or from anybody else. And if you can't do that, then where have you been? What have you done? No, I'm I'm not, you know, I'm not angry. I'm just I'm just trying to say that when they say peace and safety, sudden destruction comes. And I, I the, the 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 big if there is a culprit here, if there is somebody to be chastised, I would say it'd be the entire Christian community. Not only and I was lamenting today how they kicked me out of church and they excommunicated me and they called me a pariah and they called me a troublemaker. They said, Well, you know, you're not wanted here. And that was all the churches in LA. That was every church, Protestant, Catholic, all, all, total. And the reason they didn't want me is because I would do things like I get a prophetic word about a guy. Like I remember when I outed the FBI agent and, and I said, you're an FBI agent. And the Holy Spirit just told me that. 
and they went to the path. Everybody freaked. They all went into panic mode. They kicked us out. And then uh, the guy that was the FBI agent was transferred to another church immediately, like overnight. And uh, it was the most fucked up thing you've ever seen in your life, folks. Now, how did I know he was an FBI agent? Because I just know. Now, can, can I know that when I want to know it? No, it was given to me by the Holy Spirit. And it was necessary to clean up that dirty church where, you know, pedophilia ruled the day, basically human trafficking. And, you know, this is just part of the whole network of, that's why I don't like, you know, the, the Greg Lurie's and all the, um, you know, the, the Chuck Smith's and the Calvary Chapel and all that stuff. They're knee deep in all that shit. They've got, you know, those people have muscle. They threatened to murder me the Calvary Chapel people. And the people that were involved in it were um, were agents, were um, were double agents. They were there. And, and what do they do there? They keep dossiers on all the attendees. So they keep track of everyone and they, and they stalk everyone. And if anyone gets out of line, they initiate gang stalking. You remember the old fashioned gang stalking. Well, it's not old fashioned, it's here. It's uh, you see it on the high levels of politics now. And you see when they go after someone to ruin them, it's the media, it's electronic, it's lawfare. It's, it's, it's also literal stalking and it's death threats. Okay. Death threats. And these are going on. I mean, pro- and they're proliferating. There's more now than there ever were. Now that Trump is in, it's going to go through the roof. Uh, stalking death threats. Uh, electronic uh, 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 stalking, electronic harassment, especially those, um, they have instruments that can, you know, give you diseases and permanently maim you. And they've, they've been, they've experienced, some of these uh, weapons can actually melt buildings and just, you know, have, have matter just melted on the ground. And so they have the ability to beam that at you at any time. And plus they know who you are, where you are, what you're thinking all your posts, all your social media, they know you inside and out. They know where you are. If they want you dead, they can make you dead in five seconds. That's exactly how well they know you. And people seem to forget that. See, we were talking about the technology 10 years ago. Now it's 100 times more lethal, and we're not talking about it. It's like, oh, well, we don't talk about gang stalking anymore. Okay. Well, you just go ahead and celebrate then. Peace and safety. I think the right attitude toward the whole thing is, wow, that's a blessing. If there's going to be a golden age, that'd be great. But since I'm, you know, I'm not God, I'm going to stay vigilant and keep my eye on things. And I'm going to refrain from, uh, you know, pop of the champagne and all that stuff. I'm just going to go day by day and, and do what the Lord would have me do, even if uh, no one acknowledges it. You know, I mean, just, just simple things. And um, I pray a lot for the churches, but I don't see how they'll be saved. I don't see how people that go to church will be saved ever. I, I How, you know? How can they get that oath that they took? Instead of their hand, maybe their dick. But how can they? How can they undo that? That's pledging allegiance to Lucifer in exchange for the world. How can they do that? And then trafficking the children. Okay, if you touch one of these children, a millstone should be around your neck, and you should drown at the bottom of the sea. How are they going to undo that? Well, nobody can hide, nobody can run. So the best thing that can happen really is just confess to the Lord everything you've done and just beg for mercy. You know, that, that's what Americans should be doing is begging for mercy because to whom much is given, much is expected. And the starvation, we have become the biggest trafficker the world has ever seen. We're missing, they say, 350,000 kids. It's more like... 500,000, it's a million a year that go missing in the United States and they all wind up dead. Why is that? And where are their bodies? We don't know. Why is that? 
who's involved in the trafficking business? And if I told you many government officials, would you understand? And when you get too close to that topic and you get too close to interdicting on that subject, then they send out the, uh, you know, the, the, they send out the, uh, mach- the machine comes after you to kill you, to kill your family or discredit you or, you know, put you in a, if you've taken an oath, then that thing they blackmailed you with will come out in the public and then you'll be taken down. Uh, they're trying to do that to Matt Gates right now. He's, the, the, he's a very tough, he would be a very tough uh, attorney general and they don't want to go to jail. So they got to get him out of there. And so they're lying about this, you know, whatever the evidence is, whatever they think they've got on him. And um, they, they will continue with the same lie like they did with Trump, where it's like, where they say, well, Trump said there are good people on both sides, including Nazis or, or whatever it is. They just lie. And I just figure, you know, are people in this country that fucking stupid that you would believe any of that? The answer is yes, they are that stupid. Bo- on both sides of the aisle, the people are that stupid. How did you get that stupid? Well, they got that stupid by watching television, by being diseducated in the uh, schools, by following the rules, by doing what their parents did. And this has turned into a shit show. Nothing to be proud of in America at this point. Not until it's cleaned up. And who is it going to clean it up? Uh, right now, all I hear is golden age. You know, and and and, it, and I love it. If we can escape uh, the you know a global thermonuclear war, that would be great. Uh, yeah. So let's talk about it. No. Well, hey, where'd you go? Too busy. You're chasing down that deal in Facebook. Yeah. You got to buy that uh, that RC helicopter, huh? Anyway, so that's, and, and, and also if you win, you don't, you, you know, like the, like the other side, uh, like the, well, I say the other side because I'm not on the side of, there, to me, there is no Democrat party. There is no, you know, Republican party. They're just people now. And so the people of the military industrial complex, both rhinos, uh, uh, neocons, Democrats, whatever, Marxists, who want to tear down the whole system and build it in a, in a diversity, equity, and inclusion manner, um, you know, and by tearing down all the statues of all the racists and everything, they can get a fresh start. And the other thing that AI is pushing right now is killing all the white people. So AI is completely racist. And they're hypocrites because they're, they're, they're doing now what they've complained about their whole lives of being excluded because they're black or whatever. They're now doing to 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 is you know to to many people, including um, you know the Latino Latino versus black uh, thing is going now. The blacks are against the Latinos, and um, and and of course against Asians, and so everybody really is hating everybody. But the main one now is to get rid of AI. Wants all humans to die, but they really want white people to die first. And they feel that that's the problem with the world. And of course, they want to tear down all the borders of all the countries and have it be a Luciferian playground. My friends, before it becomes a Luciferian playground, it will be burned to death. And everything in it will be burned to death. And so as a warning prophetic voice, a warning prophet here, I'm functioning in that capacity now, I'm saying that you need to be concerned about this. And at least... You know, at least uh, pray about it and figure out what God wants you to do and for your part, whatever that is. I know that we've got uh, brothers and sisters in, in, you know, India, Pakistan, and the third world that they desperately need food and they desperately need help. And it's getting, it's gotten a lot worse because of this regime that's in power now. They've starved everybody. And they're, they're, they're uh, buying up all the farms, uh, your friend Bill Gates and others. And this is the, um, you know, the totalitarian left, if you will. They're buying all the farms. They want to shut down eating meat, but they, they eat Wagyu steak um, at uh, their, their, you know, at the G20. And uh, elsewhere, they have gourmet meals. 
but not for you. And when you see something like that, you realize they are your enemy. Klaus Schwab is your enemy. Soros is your fucking enemy. They, they want it for themselves. They want you dead. If they want you and your children dead, they want you to suffer. They wouldn't be your friend now, would they? But how many people have been trained, you know, tra- and trained and you know, entranced, uh, you, you know, to, to think a certain way, support these people because they go, well, they're our liberal brothers and sisters. We're all working for a Marxist solution. So it can be fair for everybody. Um, there is no such thing as a Marxist solution. The closest you'll get is a dictatorship, which is what you have now, which you don't realize. And um, basically, you'll be a subject, um, you know, a serf, a subject to that uh, machine. And if you speak up, you could, you know, you might have to go live off the grid. I don't know. Anyway, um, I wanted to talk about this. uh, Because the gang stalking got to be so... The abuse got to be so, like when they would put you in the hospital, they would glee over your suffering. They would just almost orgasmic glee that, you know, now you're going to pay. You should have joined up when you had the chance. Now you'll see. Now you're going to see what it's like, uh, you know, to, to rebel or whatever. And then people would be going, Kids, you know, my age at the time, you know, teenagers and stuff would be going, well, what are you talking about? I can't tell you what I'm talking about. You should know. I should know. I really ought to know. Oh, you wipe those smug looks right off your face. You think you're so superior because... You figure it out that it's a satanic world and you can sell out into it and become part of the collective and make sure and ensure that you have a paycheck, huh? How's that working out for you now that you're retired? Pretty good? How's it working out now that your kids are all looking at you just hoping for you to die at any minute, hoping they're going to get something out of the inheritance? You know, so it's... um, it's human nature that we're really dealing with. And the thing about human nature is that we're fallen and within us, each of us is evil. And I'm a sinner and, uh, and I definitely have sent up a storm the last few days in terms of working on my hatred of, um, you know, people that have done harm to me and, you know, wanting, needing some kind of justice and then not getting it turns into frustration and hatred. Um, I used to joke and say, yeah, if my dog were floating down the river and, and a human being was floating down the river, it's, if it's one of them floating down the river, I'm rescuing the dog. You know, the hell with you. And that's uh, hatred. <laughs> By the way, that's a sin. And if I don't forgive that person and rescue them out of the river and give them the shirt off my back, even though they try to kill me, I fall short of the glory of God. I fall short of of uh, the teachings of Jesus. I fall short completely because the, the answer to that is to love your enemy and to, and, and the edict from Jesus after he gave us the Lord's prayer, he said, you know, if you don't forgive your enemies, the Lord will not forgive you. And then I started thinking, I started realizing From God's perspective, it's like he would perceive us all as the enemy. We are the enemy. And I could see it. I could see that nobody is is, uh, righteous enough to be, to heal the breach of God. Nobody, but, you know, Jesus, but I mean, nobody. So therefore, God sees us as the enemy and he forgives the enemy. He gives us grace despite the fact that we hate him. You know, we hate him. We don't hate him in a visceral way. I mean, we hate him in our action. You know, when we indulge in sin, and it doesn't matter which one it is, you know, we, that's an act of hatred against God, isn't it? So he sees us as the enemy. So like, I got to forgive that other guy because I'm doing the same thing to God that that guy is doing to me. 
And there are times, yeah, he, he doesn't get what he wants. He wants to kill me. It's my fault. Remember this for the abuser. So the people that are abused, remember this. The abuser will always say, it's always your fault. It's always your fault. Okay? It, it's uh, You're the cause of everything. When you hear rhetoric like this, then boom, up go the red flags. You know these people are lying. It's their fault. But they want to put it on you and project it. And, you know, so... You know, I have to hit you, and I wouldn't hit you, but you made you made me do it. And how many, you know, battered wives are there who have that story? And it's not your fault, battered wives. It's obviously your husband that's indulging in sin. And um, you keep forgiving him, and he keeps coming back when he's drunk with his open hand across your face. And I'm sure he yells at the kids as well. You know, and abuses them. Nothing worse for a kid than psychological torture, being told they're not good enough. They're no good compared to these other kids over here. Everybody is, you know, that that psychological abuse when you're really young affects your whole life. You grow up with an inferiority complex, and then you feel like you can't do anything. And it was all, you know, your mother, your father, whatever. And um, the only way to heal that is, um, you know, first of all, you know, cut off relationships. I know it's very tempting to get into relationships with people that will abuse you. You know, that's that's what we want. When we've been abused, we've been psychologically abused, when we've been uh, tortured, when we've been put in incarceration by our families, you know, when we've been called a social pariah, when we've been laughed at as being a derelict, a fool, an idiot that can't do anything, then overcoming that involves, well, I hate to tell you this, but most people never overcome that. The only chance you have is a spiritual uh, healing. And that healing, uh, well, for me, it's taken, it's been a, a lifelong journey And um, I'm still, I don't know, still miles away from the goal, which would be to be, to have an even playing field, you know, to have justice, to have, to have, you know, as far as diversity, you know, equity and inclusion, equity and inclusion, I don't have it. I've been excluded from the beginning. And it's just, you know, obviously, you know, and the reason why is because they want conformists they don't want mavericks and and or people that see things a different way or they don't want to be a part of the collective they want to strike out as individuals but then then they're put down and they're harassed and tortured and i don't feel that america can advance but you you're talking about you know innovators scientists art artists poets painters Filmmakers, you know, whatever, you know, th- those are the people that mainly have to heal, that are mainly trying to grok with a world that have mainly been outcasts. I mean, there's many of them, and um, they're remembered usually for their wild antics of drinking and doing drugs and, you know, being drunk the whole, you know, say it's a movie thing. Well, he was drunk for the whole shoot, but it was brilliant, you know. <laughs> so... You know, it's, uh, and they're all fucked up, including all the actors too. They're all fucked up and everybody gets together is fucked up. And, you know, it's kind of like this project is the thing that whatever the project is that can bring people together and can might even cause some healing. And so, you knowing you can do something, but it's, it's sick how society funnels us. Well, you're not going to get a job in the insurance company. You're not going to get a, you're not going to get a, um, you know, you're not going to suddenly be inducted into the Olympics. You're not going to be, you know, you're, you're going to be put where society want, wants to put you. And you're going to have to kind of claw your way. Thank you. Nice. You're going to have to claw your way back to sanity. How many people do that? And so when bad stuff happens, 
you know, like in gang stalking, it's a, it's a, it's a, uh, it's really bad in Los Angeles. It's really bad in New York, you know, big cities, met- metropolitan areas. And people just, they walk into your house, they pick the lock, they move stuff around. So it's moved around. So you would notice it. Then they don't take anything. So you always feel you're being spied on. If you look carefully, you'll find cameras in the bathroom and other places. And you, your, your, your life is not your own. It's, it's, you know, you go down to a, a restaurant 20 miles away. They know who you are. They're watching too. They're all watching on these little closed circuit, uh, you know, feeds. And it's, uh, it's incredible. Your trauma feeds them what they need. They need to sacrifice people, i.e. war, i.e., you know, a late-term abortion. Even, well, now they're pushing for the post-birth abortion which I believe if we pass that, that would be the end of this country. And I believe there would be a bloodbath the size of, uh, they'll make the Roman Empire blush, okay? Um, It's amazing how many parents want to put their Down syndrome children to death, even though they're born already. It's amazing how many people are so selfish, they can't think of, well, I can give the baby up for adoption. I said, no, 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 no. I saw one woman with a belly like eight and a half months, you know, just a giant ready to give birth. And she goes, this, she wrote with a marker, this is not a human being. I'm free to abort it whenever I choose. And, uh, that, and, and she was demonstrating. Now, I don't know where you come from. Yeah, maybe you come from hell. But where I come from, that is uh, not just murder. It's it's um, it, it's an outright challenge to the living God. You're saying, please burn me to death. Destroy me. Hurt me. Hurt my family. Hurt people. And look what I'm going to do to you. And, you know, and so we have this ongoing contest. Ah, water good. So it's very much still going on. The surveillance, though, now is, and they still come into houses. They still break in and move things around, and or they'll move your car. They'll do something. Uh, you might notice um, if you put a little piece of tape over the uh, where the hood is for the engine, you know, and all that, and you. You might find it one day it's been broken. You know, these are things that they they do in an organized fashion to targets, of which there are millions of targets, millions. of. Uh, I mean, they just targeted all Trump supporters as domestic terrorists. So now, now they're all targets. And if, if unchecked, they will use the tools of the military to go after each person and at least destroy their reputation so they can never work again. They go, well, they're racist. They don't want diversity, equity, and inclusion. And diversity, equity, and inclusion is just Marxist speak for tear it all down and build it up as a dictatorship. Where we, the proletariat, will make the rules. And we'll watch you. And if you step out of line and you're not being inclusive or you don't use the pronouns or you do anything wrong, we're going to ruin, we're going to take away your pudding on Thursday night. If you don't approve in the war in Oceania, we will break you. We will kill you. If you're afraid to speak up, you know you're living in, in a, a nightmare. You're living in, you're not living in a free country. You're not free. You're a slave. You can't say what I say. The only reason I'm free and you're not is because I'm, I'm taking the risk of free speech. And that makes me free because I'm speaking truth. And the truth will set us free, indeed. Understanding what the world is, I'd love to do a class on it. I would just teach a class at, at in my own university called The World. And I could have taught Randy Quaid a thing or two, you know, about what happened to him is so typical 
and especially dealing with these, uh, because everybody has a dual identity. If you're working as an executive for XYZ Studio in Hollywood, you have another identity, maybe as a, an assassin. I mean, you know, everyone has a dual identity. Everybody has to do service to the big machine. Everybody is a policeman, a soldier, somebody who's watching the others to see if anyone is objecting to the ultimate, you know, the you know, you know the ultimate thing. I just remember when uh, we had John Podesta's voice torturing some kid. You know, I'm your father. What do you call me? And the kid's screaming. And, um, you know, I can tell because I have very good pitch, a very good uh, ear, you know, through music and stuff. So I could tell that was him. And what happened to him? Zero zilch nada. What will happen to any of them? Nothing. The government is there to protect them. There's no other, they're not protecting you. They could give a two shit about you. They don't give a shit at all about you. They hate you. Especially people who are on their side. They want you to die first. They, in every Marxist regime, they've done the same thing. So we have to pay attention to politics. And it alarms me to see people arguing over their little arguments and, you know, wanting a new golden age and thinking that, you know, and not realizing there's 67 days to go before any kind of inauguration where there would be maybe a fixing of the economy. I, I, I don't know what's going to happen. I just know that right now we're shenanigans are going on. Okay. And people are not paying attention. And uh, I don't care whether you're Republican, Democrat, independent, you know, black, white, you know, red, yellow, green, whatever. It doesn't matter any of that. You're hated. Okay. You are just a little person, a peasant, a fool. As far as the influencers go, they're hated too. They just don't know it yet because they get to live in mansions in Bel Air. So they think they're exempt. That's bullshit too. They're not exempt. They're, they're tied up. They're slaves. They're completely enslaved. In fact, the pool man has power over them. The maids run their lives and their kids. They have to do what the maid tells them. They have, they're like dominatrix maids. If you're talking Beverly Hills, Bel Air, West Side of Los Angeles, the maids run the show. That's the way it is in every, because who else is going to spy on the, uh, the employers, the, the family, the husband, the wife, the kids that are going to, you know, private schools and, 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 you know, um, and they're living the life and they're going to the restaurants and the, you know, the yachts and the blah, 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 blah. And, and the maids are there at every turn. They've collected samples of writing. They've collected legal documents and they hand them over to people that keep track. Okay. So that if that man, that breadwinner could be the woman or the man, if they step out of line, they have all these documents ready to go. Why? Because they're slaves and slaves don't have the right to privacy. So who do you think is going to keep track of them? The maids. They're all like, you know, from Mexico and whatever you think. Oh, they're just dumb maids speaking Spanish. They don't understand English. And basically they take over the whole thing. And they also make sure that if the kids don't conform, that they're going to be tattled on and ratted out. And that that they're going to be uh, forced to, they, in many cases, to kill the kid, to drive the kid to suicide through the stalking uh, because they're not, they're not getting it. Like if they're a pure heart and they don't understand, they're, you have to be double-minded to enter into this world, this, you know, the two worlds, the two realms here on earth, you know, the one that, that rules and then the one that's the illusion of freedom and the kid doesn't understand that. If he doesn't wake up and start, you know, playing ball, He's going to be taking a long walk off a short plank. And 
you know, I've seen a lot of that. It brings to mind the Menendez brothers, how they were uh, really, in a sense, getting wind of the way things work, but they were still focused on the father and the, and, and the mother, but they were seeing glimpses and certainly when they got to court, they saw the machine in action and the machine put them away with no mercy. And, uh, you know, they, they were being, uh, uh, you know, abused since they were basically toddlers. And, you know, they were completely damaged people. And they thought very correctly that they were either going to be poisoned or killed if they talk about it outside they're all told that and they're also there's programming called self-destruct programming that if you talk about the abuse or the because the abuse goes to uh spiritual abuse it goes to satanism witchcraft which is by the way all the maids in, in beverly hills and the surrounding area they're witches what did you think they were they're like you know Eighth generation Santeria witches, and they they're more powerful than the parents. In fact, I remember one woman, she was, Oh, I have to have so and so back, uh Carla back because uh I need her to tell me what to do. I need her to 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 order me around. I need her to take command. You know, and that's like across the board. They become dependent on the maids, which is their purpose. And then the maids have these, lots of them have these big houses in Mexico. You know, how could you afford that house? I'm not going to tell. You know, my lips are sealed. Uh, silencio. <laughs> you know, and um, yeah, they, uh, they do it because they want money. And they can get wealthy that way and take the money back to Mexico. That is exactly why they do it. If you read my book class backwards, you'll see an example where all the, uh, where they have human sacrifice in the, uh, in the Coliseum at the, at the, they have their own Olympics of uh, witchcraft and sacrifice and satanic ritual abuse. And it's all just, you know, cheering and out in the open and everybody defers to it. Everybody protects it. Nobody will go up against it because they want a paycheck too. And so now, where are you? I go pull up to the bar, pull up to my seat. Got my name stitched on the bar there because I'm a VIP. Sitting there ordering my uh, Jack Daniels and, uh, you know, and Budweiser. And I'm sitting there just enjoying the shit out of myself. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm being a you know, big man on campus. I'm telling all the guys at the bar what I'm going to do next. I'm going to build this building. I'm going to do a movie. I'm going to build a yacht. I'm going to take a trip around the world. I'm going to blah, blah, blah. I'm going to own it. I own everything. And um, it only takes one guy coming into that bar who has a higher rank. And that guy will shut the fuck up in a hurry because he knows that boasting putting yourself in the newspaper anything like that is going to bring the wrath of the system down on your head and uh so you not only cannot stand out step out of line in a rebellious way you can't boast either so you see a lot of quiet men living in desperation in their clubs with their leather chairs up in bohemian club in san francisco you know, having their scotch and water and and just or their scotch on the rocks, I should say, in their in their um Lalit glasses, and they're just fretting what they've done to themselves and they wonder is there any way out? And then they talk about their kids. You got old Junior going yet? Well, not quite, but he'll he'll see the light. Well, you make sure he does, or you know what happens. And um that's like 101 of our society. Everything I said is true. 100%.
Just wanted you to know that. And, well, I know it's true. I know all that stuff. But what were you supposed to do about it? There's only one thing you can do about it. You know, you're going to have to make some kind of amends with the Most High God. You're going to have to heal the breach. You have to be healed. You're sick. You're a slave. You're a serf. I don't care if you have a 400 foot yacht and, a, and you know, in five mansions in, uh, around the world, you are a slave. I don't care if they pay you, you know, 50 million per movie. You're a slave. And you chose that because they programmed you to be successful. Anybody could sympathize with that. Nobody is coming down on you for, you know, for the choices you made to be successful or to win. And so what is winning? And the Bible, I'll just go back to the Bible before you get mad at me, the messenger. Let me go back to the Bible. It just says, you know, what does it profit a man if, if uh, you know, he gains the whole world but loses his soul? There is no profit in that, folks. You know that. And now our souls hang in the balance because we have this sort of not veiled but open public nuclear threat. And it's it's all based on Washington, D.C. and what they will do or not do. I think the reason for the launch was probably because of the uh, Koreans, the North Koreans being on the front in Russia fighting alongside the Russians. So that was considered an escalation, right? I'm not giving Putin a pass here, but he has, a, I think, a calmer head than, than you know, Jill Biden and Obama. And so I'm, um, you know, I'm watching. I have my own, you know, expectations. I hope things go well. I would like to, to continue on and, you know, get a couple more projects. I, I mean, I don't know. You, I was almost dead a year ago. I was in the hospital with uh, uh, in critical condition. And um, if I died, it would have been okay. You know, folks, really, it would have been okay. It's okay to die. You can go ahead and die. It's no, no sin, okay? There's no onus on that. And uh, But, you know, me, I'm going to fight back. <laughs> you know, I'm not going to go gently into that good night. And I'm not going to let that fucking hospital cage me. I'm not meant to be in a cage or the jail or any of those places. You know, I'm, 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 I'm going to, I know that, that, you know, the show gets people mad. I've, I've walked into places like one mechanic. I remember I was, I had this old truck. It's a big Ford 350 diesel. And we took it to this mechanic in Albuquerque and everything was lovey dovey at first, you know what I mean? When a couple of times. And then this third time we, I found out they had listened to my Zeph report and took the truck in there. And then the vibe was like, we're going to kill you. And I'm like, then you would be killing a peaceful person. That means you no harm, no harm whatsoever. You'd be killing someone that would go to bat for you. You'd be killing someone that would actually care about you. But that's okay. Kill the people who love you and love the people who hate you and try to get on their good side and try to convince them that you're really, really, you know, you'll do anything to get their respect when the people that love you are just shown the door. But that's exactly what it is. When they persecute uh, lambs of God, the lambs don't mean them any harm. In fact, if I were one of them, I'd keep lambs all over the place. I would have lambs everywhere. But of course I would. I would have God's children everywhere in the hopes that I could become one of God's children. Well, I'm not stupid. I mean, well, they are stupid. They must be terribly, terribly stupid. I would keep lambs around because God has his hand of favor on them. So I would not, I would be smart and not stupid. 
And I would hope that some of that would rub off on me. I would hope that maybe, you know, God would forgive me 